Currently, my life as a cardiology fellow is super busy, which includes balancing my clinical duties for work, being a dad to my nine-month-old daughter, being a present husband, a dog dad, a content creator, and also self-learning cardiology on the side, as well as balancing my personal goals, such as running and music. But despite all that chaos, here are the exact three steps that I use to stay productive and actually get done. I'll even show you a full breakdown of my daily calendar if you're interested. Step number one is impact prioritization. Now, if you're someone who keeps creating to-do lists to the point where you have a list of un finished tasks from your past to-do list that you now have to create another to-do list for. First of all, I've been there. Just as an aside, I have a notes section on my phone that is basically all my to-do lists that I've had for the past year. As you can see, they continue to pile up because there was no one simple way of keeping track of everything I needed to do. But after a lot of tinkering with a lot of systems, here is how I finally managed to fix it. The first thing you need is just one central hub where you can just collect all your to-do items, all the big things, all the small things, and small reminders. Now to give you an idea of what this looks like, I'm gonna give you my example, which I currently use using Notion. Now if you're unfamiliar with Notion, I'll link down a few videos that we've done here on the channel and another full kind of breakdown video that we have upcoming, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. But Notion gives me the opportunity to essentially create this table where using both my phone and my laptop, I can just add any task. And based off of things like prioritization, what categories it is, as well as their due dates, this essentially will give me an up-to-date to-do list. So for example, here are all the things I kind of have in all aspects of my life, including things like business, academics, and personal. So a lot of home things, some trips that were going on, my wife and I and my daughter. And so I add these to the list, but as you can see, there are some big projects. For example, I may have to book a trip to, to Mexico and all of the things that correlate with that like the car and the hotel and the flights, as well as some small things. For example, I may just need to go ahead and drop off some donations, which is a very small thing to do, but this is my central hub of everything that I have in my life in one place. The nice thing is, is that every morning I can then, instead of creating a to-do list all over again from scratch as I have for the past year, I can just go through this and say, okay, what are the things that I need to get done today? And there's two ways that I decide on this. One is when I'm adding things to my list for the first time, I essentially will give them an impact level or something of how much of a priority it is for me. So as an example, let's say I have something such as a graduation coming up and I need to get a gift for the person who is graduating. So I can just say graduation gift for, and we'll just say Sam, just making up a name. Now, priorities, it's not the biggest priority in my life, so I can give it something like a seven out of 10. It's not something that I need to get done instantly, but it is something important because I don't want to show up to graduation with that one. Now, coming back to that graduation thing, I also need to have a deadline, right? So if the graduation, for example, is next week, then it means I probably should order the gift sometime this weekend to make sure it shows up on time. And so I may say by the Sunday, make sure you order that gift. And then within Notion, I have the ability to add extra notes within the section if I wanted to have links or other ideas and just kind of keep those for later. Now, the way that I've set this table up in Notion is that it prioritizes first on deadlines and then based priority. So as you can see, a lot of these top items do end up being at the highest level of my priority, being a 10 being the highest, but there are also a few things later on in the list that are sevens or sixes, and that's just because those are due, at least I made the due date for them a little bit sooner than later. And so for example, on the fifth, this graduation task that we just put is going to show up even though there may be tens below it, but because I have to get it down in that specific day. Now this is just an example of what your hub can look like. I like using Notion because I can just simply add tasks as well as kind of have tables within tables. For example, within, let's just say academics, I can see all of the to-do lists that I have had or have had in the past and so I can easily come back to those. Or through Notion, if I wanted to say this morning is going to be just spent on personal tasks, I can click the personal tab and it'll show me all the tasks that are marked with personal so just I can focus on the next one on that list. Notion also nicely gives me the ability to look at everything through a calendar so that I realize there's too much or too little planned on one specific day, I can move these things around and it'll update the ultimate hub. Now once I've updated my hub as well as assigned tasks for the specific day, I can just click this button right here, which will then tell me what things I have done for today. And step number two is going to be using open strategic slots to schedule these things in the various parts of a busy day for me. Now as a backup, I'll have Notion on my phone so I can easily add tasks that will then be updated to the hub on my laptop. But I also still use the notes section for me on my Android where I can just have a list of all the things that I need to add to my hub. But I will not use this as my primary to-do list. And just to finish off the step of impact prioritization, it's important to remember that things will always get added to this list. You 
using that hub allows me not to get overwhelmed that there's so many things left to do because I'm not worried about getting everything done every single day. I just know this hub is going to be a collection ideally of all things I need to get done over time, but not necessarily by today or this week or this month. I just eventually have to get them done and I can prioritize based off of deadlines and impacts just like that hub shows me. Because the most important thing of being productive is just feeling a sense of control so you can build that momentum over time. Now that gets us into step number two, which is using control zones. Now each one of us has specific times of the week and most importantly during the day that you just have a better control and grasp of. For example, currently as a cardiology fellow, a lot of my work hours go from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or a little bit later. So I know that doing something productive for my hub during those time slots is not very advantageous because work can be very unpredictable. So for me currently, as chaotic as my life can be at times, the control hours that I have is the hours between four and seven. Now I know that may sound egregious and way too early for a lot of you guys, but for me, my daughter usually wakes up at 7 a.m. My wife will usually wake up around the same time. And as soon as she wakes up, I'm officially in dad mode or having to go to work. And so hoping that I can get something on my to-do list done while she's awake. If any of you guys have kids, you know that that's very, very unlikely. And so having a time slot where my wife is asleep, where my daughter's asleep, my dog's asleep, and the rest of the world is, and I can just get stuff done for my to-do list, is my aspect of control zone. So let me show you on my calendar exactly what that looks like. So this is an actual look of my calendar today and throughout this past week. Now the first thing that you'll see is I'll mark my control zones just visually for you guys to be able to see. But four to seven, mentally I know that I am going to wake up during those time slots and that is where I'm going to be due to work. So as you can see from this example, today is Thursday. I have been up since right about four o'clock, actually a little bit earlier. I've actually already gotten a few things done and now I'm kind of finishing the last task, which is recording this YouTube video for you guys. And these control zones for me are personally where I will schedule tasks that just require the most amount of momentum to, and flow to be built into them. Not something that I can do with a lot of distractions. So for example, writing an email, writing a script, recording a YouTube video, or doing self-learning as a cardiology fellow, which I have to do all the time. These are the time slots that I have to do those. It also includes the time slots that I will try to schedule my workouts. So you can see a few days ago, I went on a three mile jog when the sun was coming up. Other days that I've spent doing things like learning about echoes, as well as working on emails and scripts for future videos and episodes, as well as some kind of a house stuff such as like mowing my lawn that I've had on that hub or to-do list that I can then just say what am I going to do during my control zone that needs to get done the highest prioritization and as a contrast for me personally you can see my control zones are usually where I'm scheduling very specific tasks the rest of the day are very kind of open-ended work related or just things like dinner or time with family and that's very purposeful so for example today I'm actually on call so as soon as I arrive to the hospital until tomorrow morning I will be in the hospital so I have nothing else planned so look Looking at this, you may naturally ask, well, how do you get all the other stuff on your to-do list done if this is the only time slot you have to actually get stuff done? Well, it's not the only time slot. It's just the time that I have the most control over. For example, if I need to schedule an appointment, if I need to fill out an application, if I need to renew my passport for an upcoming trip. It's often during work, for example, if I'm on an overnight shift, I may have a 30 minute lull period where nothing is going on and I'm able to work on the next task, but those are luxuries. So that is why, again, having a hub saying, okay, I have a 30 minute session right now where I'm waiting for a patient to arrive, nothing else is going on. What for my to-do list can I get done if I'm feeling afford being productive? But those smaller tasks are fit into these luxury time slots that just happen to occur during the day. Maybe I'm reading echoes and the tech hasn't uploaded an echo for the last 45 minutes. I have 45 minutes to essentially do whatever I want. I could be reading about echoes. I could be doing something personal like scheduling a doctoring appointment for myself or family an upcoming week. And so you just have to be strategic of saying my to-do list is available to get done at any time. I just know that I'm not available all the time. And so for those of you guys who are in medical school or in school in general, you can use a structure like this to say, this is the time of the day where I have the most personal control over my to-do list and my ability to get stuff done. And on the flip side, this may be the time that I have dedicated to lecture, but if anything happens such as a lecture gets canceled or maybe a lecture finishes a little bit early, I can look at the next thing on my to-do list in case I wanna get something done. Now, step number three is a concept of strategic open slots. Now, remember that being busy doesn't mean you're productive. It just means that you're really good at filling that time. Being productive, on the other hand, for me, is having a sense of one, control, and two, being gifted with open slots that just says you can do whatever you want or nothing during this time. And for me, there are two roles that are more important than anything, and that is being a good dad and being a good and present husband. Now, in the past, I have definitely been guilty of scheduling my to-do list at all times of the day. I remember definitely before my daughter was being born, I would often use evening sessions that I thought were free to go ahead and record another YouTube video for you guys, not realizing that that time could have been better use of just hanging out and being present with my wife. But definitely after after having my daughter, I know that if I'm home and she's awake at least 90% of the time, 
my most important role at that moment is just being dad. So unless there's an emergent task on that hub that I need to get done immediately, which is almost never, the only task that I need to be worrying about is being a good dad. So since having my daughter, one of the things that I've started to do is incorporating strategic open slots, which basically breaks down to when I get home, I have nothing on my to-do list that is more important than my daughter and my wife. Now, a few benefits come from this technique. Number one is that you just get to enjoy being present. I know that I've had an early start of the day. Today started at four o'clock, for example, and I get home at five. Adding more things to my to-do list will just be more draining. But saying at five or 5.30, whenever I get home, I'm just present. Whatever the day or evening brings, whether that's doing absolutely nothing or having a crazy fun evening with my wife and my daughter, so be it. Now since incorporating this method in my life, there have been definitely a lot of quick benefits that I've gotten. Number one is that I enjoy just not having anything on my plate. I can just focus on being present. But on the flip side, another benefit is that because the evening is free, if anything comes up, maybe somebody wants to have dinner with us, maybe my parents or my in-laws want to come to hang out with their granddaughter, maybe I have an event for work or fellowship, I'm not pre-booked already. Those evening slots are open. And so I know that because this time slot is open, if there's something that is pressing enough for me to say yes to, or just naturally say yes, we're free come over and have dinner with us those time slots are available in the past i may have said ah actually i have a youtube video to schedule today so sorry can't do dinner until like next tuesday but the biggest benefit of having these open slots of purposely not doing anything is that I no longer have to look at the end of the day and say, oh, I still have so much crap to do. All of us have had to-do lists where we wonder why we added the last three to five and realize we only have two or three hours left in the day to try to get them done. I am no longer worrying about stuffing productivity and efficiency through the day. It's about getting as much high impact things done in the hours that I control and the hours that I wanna say, I don't wanna have any to-do list controlling this time slot. Sometimes I get stuff done. For example, if my wife and daughter are taking a nap in the evening because they've had a long day, I can use that time slot to say, let me get some house errands done, maybe mow the lawn, maybe send a few emails, maybe watch and catch up on a basketball game. But otherwise that evening time slot is just dedicated to family and there's nothing on the to-do list that is more important to that. But otherwise that intentional non-scheduled time is just for the most important parts of life, which is just being present. Because like we said before, things will always get added to our to-do list. So instead of focusing on how much there is left to do, the real focus should just be about moving the needle with the lowest amount of stress possible over time. So that friends is my three step process that I've used to help me get super efficient as a cardiology fellow despite all the chaos. And if you want more tips on productivity as well as everything on the medical journey that I wish somebody had given to me on my first day of medical school, then one of the free resources we have down for you below is the free med school success handbook, which is a guide of tips that I've been adding for the past year and now has a hundred plus tips and things that I wish again that I knew. That free handbook has been checked out by thousands of other students just like you, so go ahead and start reaping the benefits if you're interested. And if you enjoyed the deep dive of this episode and you want all of the ones that I've used throughout my medical journey, including how to be a successful pre-med, how to study well when you're in med school, doing well on your boards, rotations, and so on, definitely check out our A to Z playbook and the med school blueprints of all the programs we've created in one single place. Again, check out the hundreds of students that have checked those out and the reviews and the feedbacks that they've left us. So I will leave those links down below in the description. Let me know in the comment section what questions you have about this process, what tips you have on productivity yourself, especially if you're super efficient, as well as what ideas you want me to be making in regards to future episodes. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, then check out all the episodes that we have in this playlist right here for you on how to be productive in your medical journey, as well as this one right here on all of the study methods I was able to use to get the grades that I wanted in medical school. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Hopefully today I was a little help to you guys on yours. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.